dressing externally, you're not in a seabird environment. Standards are within five minutes, apply hemostatic dressing in sequence and apply hemostatic dressing to control bleeding without causing further harm to the casualty. Other than breaking sequence on any of these things, there's a couple verbal cues you guys can hit. It'll help you keep on track, but they are performance measures. Don't step over the casualty at any time. You'll approach from the injury side on that day. I'm trying to give you an easy way to not mess that up. If you do step over the casualty, you probably did it on purpose because you're tired of doing this. All right, don't get more than arm's length away from your weapon, and then don't violate any of the PVE rules while you're here. If you uh, take your glasses off and you come up there and you downgrade, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna say, do you understand what you must do? All right, time starts, time stops. You're a no-go at this time for being in the improper uniform. So when you come up here, make sure you have everything on you're supposed to. For a medical lane, you do not need knee pads and you do not need gloves. <clears throat> so on test day, you guys will start up there in the holding tent, the first one you guys pass on the way in. They took away my third dummy, I apologize for that. What I will have is this particular box of class eight up there. You guys can practice on each other as much or as little as you want to your company. You can come down here and directly conduct the plane. Place yourself in the ready line when you are ready. That's that little white sign on the right. And only do so when you're absolutely ready to come down here. Because in previous years, you used to be able to come down and you'd be able to shadow box over the dummy and then time would start whenever you touch your equipment. Now the way it's set up is you'll come down here. I'll give you a little brief. I'll ask you if you have any questions at that time. And then if you do have questions, you ask me anything, all I can do is reread the brief. Yes, the exact same brief with no extra information on the subsequent reading. So you'd just be wasting our time. So I'll ask you, I'll read the little brief, the last line of which is, do you understand what you must do? I do. I'll show you candidate verify zeros on the clock. Zeros. Give you a five second pause and I'll say begin. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do when you come up here, um, you have a lot of time, so you take the time where you have it, you don't need to rush. Uh, there's no reason to get nervous or anything like that and, and miss a step in the sequence. So you're gonna pull all your stuff here out of the IFAC. There's four items in there, you need all four, so just go ahead and pull it all out. Nothing extra, nothing less. First thing you wanna do is prep this tape. Just pull off a piece, set it aside. You're gonna use it at the end, it just helps. You have two free hands now, just pull that off. You don't have to mess with it later while trying to hold this bandage simultaneously. Uh, in your books, the first thing that you have to do is expose the wound. The sleeve's going to look like this, pre-torn. It's going to be slightly pink because of the blood or whatever that we sprayed on there. There'll be a piece of tape, so just take your scissors, cut open that tape. As that happens, just take the arm, pull the sleeve up all the way to the bicep. It's going to help keep it out of the way when you go to do your wrap. Getting it caught in your wrap will be a no-go criteria. This is what the wound looks like. X here on the forearm, that's for both dummies. That's how it's going to look on test day two. After you've exposed the wound, you're just going to point at it and um, identify the point of bleeding within the wound. So if you look at your performance measures, one Bravo says identify the point of bleeding within the wound. Nothing's in quotes and it's in past tense to me, so basically it's saying identify where it's bleeding from. If that's the verbiage you come up with on that day, maybe your brain's fried from running 30 other lanes at this time, or you're getting kind of stressed out because of the clock, and all you can think to say to me is point to it and say, uh, here's where it's bleeding from. That's fine, I accept that. In my eyes, you've met the performance measure. All right, uh, just try not to poke, scrape, rake, whatever, touch, put your fingers in the wound, you'd be doing more harm at that time. The exact verbiage, if you do want it though, is I've identified the point of bleeding within the wound. So after you do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to pack the wound. Uh, obviously, you know, in real life, you're packing some kind of puncture wound, like a bullet hole or some other such thing. This is a Randy, he doesn't have a hole in his arm. So we're going to do it notionally. What we want to see you do is take a ball of gauze here, set it on top, and then to simulate packing, you're going to go and get three to four more good packs and just put it here on top. So two, three, four packs of gauze. Take the rest of the gauze, set it on top so you've used the whole gauze, and then apply direct pressure for three minutes. So there again, you have two options. You can uh, get your hands on there correctly and tell me I'm going to apply direct pressure for three minutes, at which time I'll indicate to you that the bleeding has stopped. or if you have it improperly on there, and it looks like you're feeding a 240 belt of gauze into my man's arm here, I'm just gonna tell you bleeding continues. Once you correct it, say it again, apply direct pressure for three minutes, I'll indicate bleeding has stopped and you can continue with your sequence. Your other option there is that you get it held on there properly and then you just stare awkwardly into my eyes for three minutes and after we shared that special moment, I'll go ahead and let you know three minutes has elapsed and, and the bleeding has stopped. Your choice, I kind of prefer the first one, I'm sure you will as well. Especially since that'll land your finish time around 4.50, 4.55. If you go ahead and verbalize it to me, most people finish around two minutes to two minutes and 20 seconds. And then you can continue. So once you get that verbal cue from your grader that the bleeding has stopped, we're going to begin to wrap it. 
the easiest way that we found to do it is to prop up this arm to get it off the ground so we don't have to constantly try and get the wrap under the arm. What you're going to do is just pick up the arm, take your knee, put it here into, into his shoulder area, and that Randy's a nice guy, he'll prop up his arm for you, so you really don't have to do any work on that thing. Make sure you hold your gauze in place. You want to keep it over the side of the wound. Take your bandage, wrap it around the gauze. Key things here for your wrap, just make sure we're covering the entirety of the gauze. The easiest way to do that is making sure you're, that you're covering these ends of the eighth bandage. You go like one high on it, one low on it. That'll cover up everything, and then you can just get a nice tight wrap with the rest of the bandage. This is where the tape comes into play. If you still had to rip it off, it's just harder to do because you have to hold this bandage and then try and manipulate the roll of tape to get one off. Having it pre-prepped, you just pick it up off the body, put it down, seal up your bandage. Take a second here because you have plenty of time to do it. Make sure that there's no uniform randomly caught in the bandage. Make sure the gauze is completely covered. Make sure that your wrap's good. As soon as you're satisfied that it is, you're just going to continue to monitor the casualty for life-threatening injuries and call for a medic. All right, that time I'll stop your clock. If you make it all the way to the last step, I'll go ahead and check your bandage and you get to go with that time. And I say that again because if you violated sequence somewhere in the process, I would have stopped you and said, if it's a candidate at this time, you're a no-go for a sequence violation. We would have had a conversation about why that happened. Uh, if you make it all the way to this last step, the verbiage here <coughs> is, I'm going to continue to monitor the, the casualty for life-threatening conditions. And that says, sought medical aid is what's in your book under step one hotel, I believe it is. So that, again, I'll, I'll err on the side of the candidate and give you as much leeway as I possibly can. There's a couple ways you can do it. Yell medic over your shoulder. Tell me you're going to seek higher-level medical care. The only thing I won't accept is if you use a passive explanation. You're like, uh, wait for a medic. Because that doesn't really fit the performance criteria for you having an action towards getting another 